Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. HGM here with another updated hybrid setup for the Elder Scrolls Online. It's gonna be our hybrid Paladin build. Now stronger than ever in update 33, we're talking about better healing, much better damage, and up to four damage shields combined for amazing survivability. This build can play solo, it can play in a group, with a companion, whatever you wanna do in the Elder Scrolls Online. It does it very, very well. So I think you're gonna enjoy this one. Let's jump right in to the video. All right, everybody, we are back with another hybrid build update for the Elder Scrolls Online. Of course, it's gonna be our hybrid Templar build, the Paladin, now updated for the Ascending Tides DLC. This one is actually a lot better, this patch, you guys. More survivability, much better damage, uh, because hybrids are pretty buffed in general. It's a really good play style now. Uh, so if you like Templars, I think you're gonna enjoy this build quite a bit. Uh, but let's go ahead and check out the buff stats here. Sort of self-buffed. We have other buffs we need to talk about in a minute as well. Uh, but as far as the basic character stat sheet, we've got about 33,000 max magicka, 25,000 max health, and almost 19,000 maximum stamina. So really good stats overall. Recoveries are pretty good as well. Magicka recovery is 1,100. Stamina recovery, 1,000. Your spell damage actually goes up quite a bit on this uh, build because we have minor sorcery on the Templar as well as major sorcery from our two-ended skill line. So this will actually get over 6,000 spell damage. It's going to be our main offensive stat for this setup as, as well as our uh, max Magicka combined there. Crit chance will go up quite a bit as well. That'll be closer to 55% fully buffed. And uh, the armor, even though this isn't a light armor build, pretty tanky, uh, about 22,000 spell resistance, almost 19,000 physical resistance. And we have four separate damage shields on this build, which we'll look at in a minute. So survivability is quite, quite good. Now we have 64 points into max Magicka. Like we said, uh, this is gonna be a Magicka focused hybrid build. So make sure to invest all of your points there. Uh, in terms of our food here, our buff food, be with Sugar Skulls, very good options for a hybrid setup. I think you get a lot of max stats from this food. So highly recommended. Thief Mundus, I tend to be using this on more and more of my builds lately uh, because you just want a, a good baseline of crit chance around 50% uh, at least for a solo build. And then we have tons of effects here that we'll talk about in a minute, all of these uh, minor buffs. Uh, I'll show you where those come from in just a moment. In terms of our consumables, I am using tri-stat potions currently. This will be ideal for getting most of your stats back as well as increasing your recoveries. Uh, if you don't have that, you could just have you know the basic stamina and magicka potions on hand and just switch between those based on whichever you need the most. And then finally for the race on this build, I have tried several uh, this patch. For the Paladin build, I'm using Khajiit right now. This has a very good stat pool for hybrids. You get all of your recoveries. You get all of your max stats by nearly 1,000. Uh, and of course, you get the bonus critical damage and critical healing, which is actually really nice on the Templar class. So this race plays very well. The sustain is good. The damage is good. This is what I would recommend for this particular build. But obviously, other races will work just as well. I mean, Imperial is one of my favorites lately for the extra cost reduction. Dark Elf definitely would be good for the max stats overall. You could do Nord for some better defenses. Basically any race that you can make work. So feel free to change that up if you need to. But yeah, I think that is the basics of the uh, setup here. So let's go ahead and jump into the gear sets next and see how things have changed for update 33. Now, I wanted this build to be a little bit more damage focused. Deadly Strike on the Templar really helps with the damage. You can see you get weapon and spell damage, crit chance, weapon and spell damage again, and then increase the damage. Your damage over time and channeled abilities do by 15%. So this is going to buff our main spammable skill puncturing sweep. Plus with all of our buffs to like champion points, uh, this build hits like a truck. And remember on the uh, Templar with puncturing sweeps, your damage is also your healing. So this is very good, especially on uh, a Templar build. Now I've decided just to front bar this with a uh, two-handed maul. I like maul for playing solo because you do get that extra penetration. We'll look at that in a minute through our passives. And, and then we're running uh, the precise trait with the Absorb Stamina Enchant. So this is a two-handed weapon. It's gonna count for two pieces. And then we just have three pieces on the jewelry. So the Deadly Necklace and two rings. Remember, we are stacking spell damage. 
That's going to be a stronger option for a Templar hybrid because of that minor sorcery passive. We'll look at that in a minute too. But uh, one infused, two bloodthirsty traits. You can mix up the traits as you see fit. I definitely would not keep the robust traits on the deadly set though. Uh, because that's not our main offensive stat, right? We're we're stacking Magicka on this build, not Stamina. Second 5P set. We've gone with a uh, one of my favorite sort of classic dungeon sets. This is the Scathing Mage set. This comes from the Imperial City DLC. Uh, and this is a light armor set, but it does a lot for you in terms of crit chance and spell damage. So you can see we got a two-piece max Magicka bonus. We have two crit chance bonuses. And then for the 5 piece here... When we deal direct damage, you have a 20% chance to increase your weapon and spell damage by over 500 for 5 seconds with a 5 second cooldown. So you have this up pretty much 100% of the time. On the Templar class, you have a lot of direct damage from your puncturing sweeps skill, so this procs pretty consistently, I would say, overall. And that uh, 500 plus spell damage is, is really good. It scales up nicely. Uh, with our extra spell damage passive. So this is a light armor set, like I was saying. Uh, Divines would be the ideal trait here with Max Magicka enchants. Then we're going to just run uh, the feet, legs, hands, waist, and the chest here. So five pieces, scathing mage uh, on the body. Figured that was the easiest way to run this since it is a, a dungeon. It'll be easier if you don't have it to just collect those body pieces instead of worrying about, you know, weapons and jewelry. So very powerful set, definitely recommend you check it out. Of course, let's talk about the monster set next. We went with something for a little bit more survivability, especially if you're playing solo. Uh, one of the damage shield monster sets is gonna be ideal for the setup. I went with the Mother Cianate set for this one. It buffs our Max Magicka, which is good for stacking. And it also gives us a nice shield here. Plus, you can see we get about a thousand Magicka back every seven seconds. So that's a good bit of extra Magicka sustain. Now, if you don't have this set, you could just as easily run the Ice Heart monster set. That's very similar. Uh, gives you crit chance instead of max Magicka. Gives you more damage instead of the uh, Magicka sustain. So that would be a good option as well. I just like how this set looks when it procs as well. You'll see that in a minute. It gives us another sort of bubble shield effect that looks really good on the Templar. Now, the main thing about this and, and any monster set for this build in particular is you want to get a heavy helmet and a medium shoulders. And the reason for that is we want all three armor weights represented on this character. We want light, we want heavy, and we want medium. And the reason for that is our undaunted metal passive that's going to give us 6% bonus resources, which is really important, you guys, on a hybrid setup. You want as many stats as possible so make sure to use all three armor weights if you can. Yes, that is our monster set. And then that just leaves you the option of the back bar. So like I said earlier, this is a double 2H. Got the Maelstrom Greatsword on the back bar. That's so we can run Stampede. And uh, also we get a nice buff to Stampede from this weapon. So let me just uh, swap here so you can see the full bonus. Uh, perfected is not necessary, right? You get that from Veteran Maelstrom Arena. You can run normal Maelstrom Arena and get the normal uh, Maelstrom 2H. That's totally fine. Just some extra damage. Um, I am a big fan of Stampede this patch because it got an increased duration. So you might as well get a little bit of extra bonus damage on top of that skill. Uh, so Maelstrom 2H is nice for that. Infused trait is very important with the weapon and, and spell damage enchant. You want to make sure you transmute that to infused. And the type here really isn't a huge deal because we're not going to be on the back bar for very much. So whatever you happen to get, you can use it. I have the uh, great sword right now. You could use an axe. You could use a maul. Uh, whatever you have access to is completely fine. So again, set up here, deadly strike, weapon, and uh, jewelry. We've got... Scathing Mage on the body, Mother Cianet, or some sort of damage shield monster set with the back bar uh, Maelstrom 2H. So that is the setup. Let's go ahead and look at the skills next. Starting with our front bar abilities. And we have Radiant Glory. So this is going to be our Magicka-based execute. One of the best executes in the game, really. That's why I decided to use it over uh, Reverse Slice. Main reason for that, really, is the extra healing. You heal for 20% of the damage inflicted. This is really good when you're playing solo, especially. If you're in a group, you could swap this out for the more damaging morph, or you could even use the two-handed execute if you want. But when playing solo, you really want that constant incoming healing, especially since we're not using a mythic on this build. So this will give you big, chunky heals, like 10k plus heals. 
while you're in that execute phase, because remember, you won't be using sweep at that time. Uh, so just, it's a good survivability tool as well as damage. Definitely recommend that. And then next up, uh, two-handed ability here. We've got Carve. Uh, Carve gives you very strong damage over time. This is going to be buffed by our Deadly Strike set as well. You can stack this up multiple times. Usually I'll do like two stacks to start with, uh, just so I get a nice long duration for this. I don't have to worry about it. And then it does give us a little damage shield as well, uh, about 6k damage shield for six seconds. So that's nice so for some extra survivability too. Now, yes, you can swap into the Brawler morph if you want even more survivability. That'll give you a higher stacking shield overall. So you could go either way with that one. Uh, next one, Radiant Aura. This comes from Restoring Light. That's our third ability here. And really, this is just on the bar for a sustain. Uh, a couple reasons here. So Minor Magic of Steel, AoE Magic of Steel gives us lots of Magicka back as long as we're doing damage. So this is really good for sustain. And then we also get all of the minor sustain buffs for having this slotted. So Minor Fortitude, Minor Endurance, Minor Intellect. So that's increasing all of our recoveries by 15%. So this is pretty good for sustain. Um, if you don't run this, you're going to probably feel a difference. So I definitely recommend you try this out. It's, it's a really good tool to have on your bar. Then, of course, we've got Puncturing Sweep from the Adric Spear skill line. This is our main bread and butter DPS skill. Tons of damage in an AoE. Uh, tons of healing back. You know it. You love it. And then another survivability tool here on the front bar is going to be Dampen Magic. And I figured since we're running Light Armor, it would be good to use the Light Armor Shield. This is really just for emergencies, though. Remember, we also have the shield from Carve. So basically, you can use whatever resource you need to get a shield in an emergency. So if your stamina is low, you can you can use Dampen Magic. If your Magicka is low, you can use Carve. You'll see in a second, we have a damage shield from blocking on our front bars and from our monster set as well. So this is going to be a great option, especially if you're playing solo in some more difficult content. That comes from the Light Armor skill line, by the way. And then Temporal Guard is the ultimate on the front bar. Now, this is definitely optional. Uh, this comes from the Sigic Order, so you will need the Somerset chapter for this one. But I like this for two reasons. Number one, you get Minor Protection while slotted. Uh, and you might say, well, you know, you get Minor Protection from Puncturing Sweep, so what, what's the point, right? Well, when we're doing uh, Executes here, especially when playing solo, when you're using your Radiant Glory, you're not going to get that Minor Protection from uh, puncturing sweep. So it's nice to have it just sort of passively on the front bar. And especially if you're like blocking or dodge rolling or, you know, trying to avoid mechanics in more difficult content, it's nice to just have that uh, passively where you don't have to think about it. And the second reason for that as well is it gives us an extra shield. So uh, when we're blocking, you know, on the front bar, which we will to like block a boss heavy attack or something like that, that's an extra shield. So. You know, not even counting our monster set, we have the carve shield, we have our uh, damage shield from light armor, and then blocking, we're over our max health pool with shields. So 25k health and 25k shields is uh, pretty strong, in my opinion. So that's a really good option. If you don't have that, totally fine. You could run like uh, Dawnbreaker on the front bar or the um, Adric Spear, you know, Radial Sweep one of these would be fine. Okay, let's swap to the back bar 2H, and this is where most of our dots and buffs are. Starting with Vampire's Bane. This comes from the Dawn's Wrath skill line. Very important skill, actually, um, that you need to know about this patch. So this did get buffed. It still does really good damage. It does an, an initial burst of flame damage plus flame damage over time for 16 seconds. But it now gives us both of the critical chance buffs in the game. So Major Savagery and Major Prophecy. That's about a 12% increase to your spell crit and your weapon crit. So this is really important, you guys, and it's it's not passive. You need to cast the ability. So once we cast this on our back bar, we're gonna have those extra 12% crit chance buffs uh, for the duration there. So that is nice. You need to throw that into your rotation uh, just to keep those buffs active. Now, next up, we've got Stampede. That comes from the two-handed skill line, of course. That's our second ability there. Uh, and this is very strong AoE damage over time, plus upfront damage, plus this is going to proc our back bar glyph. So that uh, weapon and spell damage glyph on the infused 2H gets 100% uptime as long as you maintain your stampede. And then a uh, third dot ability here. So three dots on the back bar. We've got Barbed Trap from the Fighter's Guild skill line. 
Uh, so this is a single target damage over time. Good damage, but we want it mainly for the minor force buff. So that's increasing our critical damage done by 10%. Uh, and so this really makes the rotation easy, you guys. It's kind of how I set it up. So we've got 16 second dot, 15 second dot, 15 second dot. This makes it really easy just to cast these one after the other uh, and keep them active in your rotation. And it's a nice long duration. That way you can stay on your front bar for longer and cast more puncturing sweeps. Finally, we've got our two buff abilities. So we've got restoring focus as our armor and sustain buff. This comes from restoring light. Uh, our last ability there. And this is the Stamina Morph, so I did want a little bit of Stamina Sustain. Remember, we've got the Minor Magicka Steel from Radiant Aura, so we've got Magicka Sustain already. Uh, so some Stamina Sustain on from our back bar buff is going to be nice. This also gives us that Major Resolve buff, so increasing our armor. Plus, this gives us the, the strongest heal uh, out of both morphs. And this can crit heal as well. As you can see, it did about, what, 3k uh, on a crit heal, so really good passive healing as long as you're standing in that rune and of course we got rally rally is our major sorcery buff this patch so in update 33 this did get changed uh, where it gives you both damage buffs now so it's great for hybrid setups you get the uh, extra stamina recovery which is great for us plus a nice burst heal uh, on the back bar so you notice we don't have any shields you know on the back bar but if you're taking damage you can just pop that rally to get a quick heal back to full that's really nice uh, finally, our back bar ultimate. Again, this is flexible, completely up to you. If you want more damage, uh, I would go with something like Radial Sweep or what I have right now, which is the Mage's Guild Ultimate Ice Comet. This thing does a ton of damage and damage over time. Really powerful ultimate uh, for an offensive playstyle. If you want to be a little bit more defensive, then I would switch in Solar Disturbance. Uh, that comes from the Dawn's Wrath. Skill line, yep, right there. And this gives the major maim uh, debuff to your enemies, so causing them to do less damage to you for a pretty long duration. So that's a good option as well. Quick rotation to show you the build in action. So make sure you start on the back bar with your buffs. And then we're going to cast our three dots here on the boss. So there's Vampire's Bane, Stampede, and Barb Trap. A couple of carves on the front bar. Lay down your Radiant Aura and then just go to town with sweeps. You can see I'm doing so much damage, I can just stay in this AoE. No problem. Swap back, redo everything at once. Super easy. Go ahead and pop your ultimate since that's ready too. Make sure Carve is up. Use your potion if you need to. Oop, let me maintain my uh, Radiant Aura for the Magicka sustain. Dots are falling off, so let's redo those. Redo our buffs. Make sure Carve is up, and then we can switch into Execute Range. I haven't even had to use my uh, Light Armor Shield yet. It's just tons of damage and survivability. There you go. So easy on this setup. It's ridiculous. All right, so let's talk about passives next. What do you need on the Hybrid Templar to make this work? Well, Templars are extremely good in terms of passives. So you'll, you'll basically want all of these with just a couple of exceptions for solo play. Uh, Piercing Spear is amazing for the critical damage on your front bar. You want that. Spear Wall, we talked about the minor protection when you're using any of these abilities. Uh, that is good as well. Burning Light is going to give us some extra damage. And Balance Warrior is going to give us extra spell damage and resistances, which is great for this build. So all of those are awesome. Make sure you get those. Dawn's Wrath, you want all of these as well. Enduring Rays, that's going to increase the duration of Vampire's Bane. Very good. Prism gives us ultimate back. Illuminate is so good, you guys, especially if you're playing solo because this gives us 10% bonus spell damage. That's why we're over 6k on this solo build, which is really powerful. And then Restoring Spirit gives you cost reduction of everything, which is amazing, especially on a hybrid setup. So you'll want all of those as well. Uh, Restoring Light this is where you have some, some options, I think, based on how you play. Uh, Mending is really good. This increases your healing. A sacred Ground as well gives you that passive minor mending, which is awesome. Lightweaver and Master Ritualist, I see these more as like group play uh, passives. So if you play entirely solo, you could probably save a couple of points for those. Now, in terms of weapon passives, it's really easy on this build since we're using two-handed and nothing else. Main things you want to think about here, heavy weapons. This does give you that extra bonus based on your two-handed weapon type. So you can see their maces give you 3,300 armor penetration. That's really good. That's what we want on the front bar. 
Uh, a couple others here. You will want Balance Blade completely, yes, for the extra cost reduction. Carve and Stampede do get quite costly, so make sure you pick this one up early. And then another really good one is Battle Rush. I uh, didn't talk about this, so when you kill an enemy, 30% extra stamina recovery for 10 seconds. This is amazing. Make sure you get that one too. Now, in terms of armor passives, like we looked at earlier, we're mostly running light armor, so we're going to get... You know, things like Magicka Recovery, Magicka Cost Reduction. And then this is more of an offensive build where we get, you know, that extra crit chance and that extra penetration, which is fantastic. So make sure you pick up all of these. Even Spell Warding, you know, is pretty good for the extra defense. And then Medium Armor, you could put some points here because you should be running one piece of Medium. So you could get, you know, some extra Stamina Recovery, extra Cost Reduction, extra Spell Damage from Agility. Those would be really good. And yes, you can get even some bonuses from heavy armor if you're running the one piece through your monster set. So I would get these eventually, but it's not, you know, mandatory right away because the bonus that you'll get is small compared to your light armor pieces. Now, in terms of guild passives, we are using uh, Fighter's Guild ability. So I would, you know, invest some points here, especially Intimidating Presence to reduce the cost of that by 15%. That's going to be the biggest uh, impact, so you want to get that pretty quickly. If you're using Mage's Guild, you know, for the ultimate, you can get some of these. Everlasting Magic, Magicka Controller, Might of the Guild, these will all be somewhat useful if you're using that Mage's Guild ultimate. And then, yes, definitely get the uh, Sigic Order passives, specifically Concentrated Barrier, if you're using Temporal Guard as your front bar ultimate, because this is what gives you that shield when blocking, so that's, that's really good too. Undaunted, we already talked about this, how important this is with hybrid builds. You will want to get this eventually. That's where you get that 6% bonus, max resources, really good option there. And then, yep, your, your racial skills, you always want those and alchemy medicinal use just to make those potions last a little bit longer. Now, in terms of champion points, a pretty standard setup overall. And of course, I will have this in the written guide. Link is down in the description if you want to check that out. But we got the basics that you would expect here for like a solo build. So uh, Steed's Blessing, Liquid Efficiency, Rationer, Treasure Hunter. Those are my green slotted stars. For the blue stars, I have got Biting Aura, Mastered Arms. These both buff your Puncturing Sweeps, by the way. So you will want these first. And then I would pick up Thaumaturge next to buff all your dots. And then I would pick up Fighting Finesse at the end uh, for that extra crit damage and crit healing. If you're playing purely solo, remember to come here into your defensive stars. These are all passive, so you don't have to waste any slots on these, but you get like extra healing taken, 10% damage reduction. That's huge if you're playing solo, plus some extra, you know, elemental and martial damage reduction. So those are really good too. And then for our red stars, we got the usual here, Boundless Vitality for the health. Fortified for the armor, Rejuvenation for the recovery. I did go with Bastion here for the fourth slotted star. That's because we have four damage shields, right? So each of those damage shields is going to get buffed by 15%. It's really good if you want to play solo on this build. Definitely check into that. If not, um, if you're playing more group content, then I would pick up probably... I probably would do Bloody Renewal just so we can maintain that Stampede and that Carve a little bit better. But like I said, all the... CP stars and the passive stars are going to be in the written guide, broken down by 300, 600, 900, and 1200 champion point loadouts. So go ahead and check that out if you need to see more about those. And then last but not least, let's check out the outfit style in case you're curious about the paladin look here uh, under, where are my armor styles? So this is all heavy armor, even though I'm wearing light, I've, I've uh, used the heavy armor styles because I think it looks better for this type of build. So this is a mix of like the imperial chest piece and then the other pieces like shoulders uh, hands feet that is going to be the gray more style all right everybody with that said that's going to wrap up this update for the hybrid templar paladin build for the elder scrolls online hope you guys enjoyed this one i think this update especially just shows how powerful hybrid setups can be and how many options you have now when creating builds in eso it's definitely a great time to be playing and theory crafting hopefully these give you some ideas of your own so you can get started yourself now i do have a couple more hybrid builds that i will be updating this week so keep an eye out for those of course if you want to see more details on the paladin setup make sure to check out that written guide link is in the description 
Over there, we'll have alternate gear sets, alternate skills, all the important passives, and then CP allocations for 300, 600, 900, and 1200 CP, plus a companion build, I believe. So there's lots over in the written guide if you want to check that out as well. And of course, as always, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there, and I will see you around in the next video.